Welcome to another episode of Badass Banking. I've got two totally cool guys today with names that are hard to pronounce. I got Alberto Ro Ron Cajolo. Wait, help me out, Alberto. Ron Cajolo. Ron Cajolo. Ron, Ron Cajolo. I'm never going to get that right, man. And then I got right. Anurag. I got Anurag uh, Mukherjee. Is that right, Anurag? Close that enough? sounds perfect. Yes. Let's let's start with some introductions. You guys already know who I am. Anurag, tell us a little about what you're doing and who you're doing it with. And also talk about your fondness for living in hotels lately. <laughs> okay. So, th so there are two parts to it, right? One, who I am, right? So I'm a consultant by birth, I would say, doing consulting for the last 10 years. Uh, right now, I lead the growth for our community FI business, for a firm called EXL. EXL is a listed firm in NASDAQ, been there for the last 24 years. So that's that's pretty much what I do, lead growth for this firm, for community FIs. And yeah, the, the, the next part of the question, that's intriguing, Brian, right? So it's been the last, I think, 45 days I haven't knocked the door at my place. I've been just living out of a suit, suitcase so I've traveled across seven states, starting from the East Coast, New York, New Jersey, going all, all the way up to Boston, then Philly, covering a bunch of other states. Now in Seattle, finally, for this week. Uh, again, we'll be flying out to California possibly end of this month. So yeah, it's a, it's an interesting journey, right? I mean, every cup in the morning, a single motor and vision that you want to go and solve some problems of community FIs powered by data. And you meet C-suites, brainstorm, understand what exactly are the pain points and how can we jointly go and solve them. So that's pretty much about my journey for the last one and a half months. And it's been an interesting one, I bet. And, and just so everybody knows, the best Indian food you found in the United States so far was down here in Virginia when you visited with me, correct? Absolutely. <laughs> I, I agree to it. Yeah. And just, you know, five or six weeks ago, you were living in India, moved to the United States to help EXL grow their U.S. community banking practice, in essence. And yep. you also met with Alberto, who's down in Miami. Alberto, give us a quick intro. Yeah, sure. So uh, Alberto Roncajolo, uh, I I live in Miami, like Brian mentioned. Um, I've been in payments for close to 20 years, 95% uh, of it. Uh, within the Western Union family under Western Union Business Solutions, uh, which eventually was sold to, uh, it became Convera. Uh, within that, I've done partnerships, uh, worked with FIs, um, but my last, I would say, seven or eight years, I focused quite a bit with financial institutions and fintechs in Latin America and the Caribbean. Um, my last year, uh, I went to work at a... Uh, uh, banking as a service provider down here in Florida. Uh, however, I think uh, late May, I found myself without a job uh, as many of these banking as a service companies sort of started pivoting and adjusting. So I got to spend quite a bit of time with, with my family over the summer. Uh, and just very recently, I have taken on a role at CorePay, which is another global company, global payments company, um, and I'll be leading their efforts with financial institutions in North America, but we are also going to be uh, expanding and opening doors in Latin America, which to me is very close to my heart because I'm originally from Venezuela. Uh, so I know and have lived the painfulness of banking uh, in Latin America. So if you folks think that banking in the U.S. is archaic, uh, Latin America is a whole different ballgame. Um, so I'll be doing that. Um, so I'm, I'm very excited. Well, congratulations on the new gig. I'm super happy uh, for you. you. I know I know, Anurag and I'll probably still be uh, keeping you in the loop on some of the stuff we're doing here at EXL, but sounds like an awesome opportunity. I'm glad you're able to pursue something that you're so connected to. Thank you. Uh, you know, I did a lot of stuff with uh, Latin America with Move and, and 
Yeah, as much as they have their challenges down there, the people down there are actually a pleasure to work with. They fully awesome. understand the challenge. So anyway, today I want to talk a little about social media because I think it played a big role in how we've all gotten connected as well as you know how we uh, have built our 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 business practices, if you want to call that. Anurag is somebody who drives growth for EXL. You know, you are a huge proponent of social and Alberto, obviously that's how we met and uh, it's been yep. near and dear to your heart as well. I saw a post today by, by a guy and it was on Twitter, now known as X. I'm not used to that. I, I call it Twitter. His name yep. is Adam Singer, S-I-N-G-E-R. And this is what he said. He was addressing podcasters and vloggers. He said, social media is bad, makes you stressed and anxious, ruins your life. And then he said, as for me, social media has made me in real life friends on every continent, tons of laughs, hundreds of speaking gigs, seven figures, and it just unstuck my writer's block. Then he continues to say, Maybe these guys just use social media wrong. I, for one, could not agree more with that. Any thoughts on that from you guys? Yeah, so I think he's, I'll take a crack at it first. Um, I think he's 100% correct, right? I mean, I think myself, I I think I've, I've lived the cycle of social media, right? So like when I was going to college, Facebook just came out when I was finishing college. So like the beginning of social media, as we know it, I lived it when I was becoming an adult and, and getting into my professional career. And I would say that his first statement is absolutely true. You know, you, it depends how you use it. So back then you're using it to connect with friends and, and, you know, other things and, and buying and selling stuff or whatever, which, which you still do today, but, as you mature and as you get older and as you, you know, getting deeper into your professional career, I started using social media a lot differently, right? I mean, instead of going to Twitter and just going on rants and reading news 24 hours a day and, and you know, just going nuts with everything and anything, I started meeting folks. Like I, I started following people within the payments industry. Uh, so I started following Brian. I started following a group uh, of folks that Brian knows uh, all in the payments industry or, or fintech, right? And so from there, it was just like, okay, you know, you start meeting these guys and and, 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 and ladies as well uh, that are in the industry and they themselves are connected to other influencers and, and leaders within their industry. So now social media becomes a powerful networking and business tool. Um, I met Brian through Twitter, uh, I would say like four or five years ago. Uh, and that led to, you know, a pretty cool relationship. Uh, through Brian, I met Anorak recently at EXL. Um, and that's been the case with you know, I would say 20 to 25 other people. Uh, but you get away from Twitter and LinkedIn has sort of become the same, right? Uh, you can use LinkedIn for, you know, you, you can misuse it uh, the same way that you can misuse Twitter or X or Facebook. And, and But I would say over the last 10 years, you know, you, I've learned how to maximize what I get out of LinkedIn. And by that, I mean, okay, I want to meet people that are adding or, or becoming key ingredients to my career in payments, the people that can help me, but that I can also maybe help. Uh, and I also want to use it to get leads, right? So meeting people at banks, community banks, you know, pay, other payment companies, right? Um, so I feel like it just, this guy's right. I mean, you, you can, it depends how you use it. Uh, if you misuse it, yeah, you're going to, stress is just going to explode and anxiety and, you know, people lose sleep. You know, not to say that today I I, I don't. I mean, there's there, there are times where, you know, 
midnight and you're scrolling through Twitter, right? So like that stuff still happens, but it's now more, you know, focused on the professional side of things. Well, that'll stop. Hey, Anurag, how about you? I mean, your story is very, very unique. Um, and, and you use social, I've noticed, especially Instagram and uh, what's that new one called? Uh, I threads. Should know. Threads. You That's use that in a very creative way with a lot of shots of you out in the field now that you're growing your U.S. presence. So talk, talk for a little about like what you're doing with social and, and what value you found in it. So I think, I mean, one very specific uh, thing I, I want to you know conquer with Alberto is the role of social has played like phenomenal for me. I mean, technically, Brian, even I I met you through social because I mean our common connect Varsha who is to work with Movin. I met her through LinkedIn. After that, we became friends, and then I got to know you. Right, so it's a chain reaction. Knowing Brian, knowing Alberto, knowing everyone in the community and, industry. And Varsha Varsha is located. In, in India. India. I was connected to her through Movin. Absolutely. So, I mean, it just shows you that global reach that can occur Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. when you use social correctly. Absolutely. And I mean, you know, there are two parts to it. One is the Instagram and threads thing. The second is, Inst uh, is LinkedIn, right? So I believe LinkedIn has huge, huge potential. I mean, uh, I've been using LinkedIn since university, right? I mean, just to let you know, I found my first job out of campus in 2014 from LinkedIn, right? So I'm such a strong proponent for that. I mean, I mean, in terms of job searches, I've done it for years on LinkedIn. Now it's done and dusted. Now, when you want to build your business from scratch, literally I'd build, I'm trying to build this business from scratch, the community of our business. So this has multiple com com components to it. One is awareness that yes, uh, there's someone called Anurag, EXL has a plethora of, you know, community FI offerings, which, which are geared towards community banks and credit unions. So that awareness, I simply started, you know, creating a newsletter, a weekly newsletter. <coughs> With, you won't believe me, within a week's time. Now I think I have 2,500 followers in that newsletter, out of which 50% of the followers are only community FI. So just imagine from nothing to having uh, maybe 1,200 people in the community FI space, subscribing to your newsletter so that's a huge exposure to both me to excel to you know the entire community as well as sharing and gathering information that's one part of it awareness second second is in terms of typically generating business now i believe you know classical sales or typical sales is not something which works for me it's more of i would, I would say value sharing knowledge sharing, how can both of us go and solve a problem? That can only happen when people get to know you, right? You cannot just hop hop up one sudden day on a door and knock the door, as simple as that. So LinkedIn has served me enormously uh, to gain that traction within the community of iSpace, getting me meaningful conversations, leading to uh, driving business impacts. So that's partly on the LinkedIn perspective. Second, uh, I, mean, I mean, I've started using Facebook since again, I was in my college. So I was a cool guy in the college only because of Facebook. I had around three and a half thousand friends. So every alternate person in my college or my, or my university knew on Rag because I was there on Facebook, right? So, so starting from those days down to doing business, I think social media has played an enormous uh, play in my life, I would say. I mean, I would say my partly my identity out there is because of what LinkedIn or, or what Instagram is. Another interesting thing, not related to it, but might be in the next five years, we'll be talking about talking about metaverse. We'll be talking about you know our, our avatars in metaverse. One step ahead of LinkedIn, and then maybe Brian, Anurag, and Alberto will chat on metaverse. So that that that's the next evolution which I can definitely see from social media. I guess I need to start working on my avatar because the one I have now is not so cool. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I use um I use LinkedIn a lot differently than how I use Instagram. Instagram for me is very personal. It shows more about me from a personality perspective. Uh, one of my passions is boating, and I spend yeah. a lot of time on the Chesapeake Bay. My wife and I do a lot of Caribbean trips, so I like to put those pictures out there. In the case of LinkedIn, um, I try to create original content rather than sharing of articles to other people. 
that original content usually is based around my own personal experiences within the financial services industry. Um, typically, it's related to either service that I got that was great or service that was really poorly done. I often talk about um, the misuse of data or lack of use of data. Banks and credit unions, we know, need to be more relevant for whatever reason. Uh, one of the banks I currently work with constantly reminds me of how irrelevant they actually are. So I post a lot about that, and that tends to get a lot of a lot of traction. Um, Anurag, as you were preparing to, and you know, you and I have been working together now for several months. As you were preparing to migrate here to the U.S., how important was your social media? We'll call it strategy in in helping you prepare for that that journey. I think again, you know, uh, the basic thing is awareness. Basic thing is resonating with what the industry is facing as problems, right? So I think there were two parts to it. One is getting aware, you know, of, of multiple problems and then bringing our expertise to understand how can we help them, but also propagating that, yes, we can definitely help because these are the problems we've solved for multiple other FIs, right? So that was very much necessary to bring the word out. And regarding my movement from a different continent to North America, yes, I mean, social media would have been the only way to get my name out there for people to know me, for people to know what EXL is doing in the community of ice space. So I think this, uh, this, this required a lot of planning, right? So I plan at least six months ahead. I mean, what are the different things that I want to do? Like, for example, again, I mean, hinging, hinting back to the community of I newsletter, followed by doing original content almost every single day. Uh, posting, publishing my thoughts, my point of views, writing articles, connecting with thought leaders, uh, going on to panels across social. So this really helped me, but it needed a lot of lot of planning. And I definitely think right now, just because of, just because of social media, specifically LinkedIn, uh, we are much well positioned uh, as uh, you know. I, I would say both me individually as well as representing Excel. We, I mean, you know. In the community FI offering, we are much well positioned than we were earlier. And you're in Washington State right now, right? At the Washington Bankers uh, event? Yes. So I, I'll be attending the credit and lending conference with Washington Bankers starting tomorrow and Friday. Uh, we have a bunch of interesting bankers out there. Ron Chevlin will be there. So we are, so we, so we are meeting to, we are planning to meet around uh, over there along with Duncan Taylor. So yeah, interesting times ahead for the next two days. Let's see what has and Ron's one of the uh, OGs. He's one of the speakers. He's yes. one of the OGs of social media too. Not to mention fintech, obviously. You know, um, his his personality is uh, large as life. That's for sure. Alberto, who are some of the social media fintech or bank gurus that you really pay attention to? Yeah, so there's there's a few, um, and I think each one sort of represents, or they're, they they have their own specialty, right? So. For example, Alex Johnson and Jason Mikula. Um, those two guys are great. I mean, they, they're they sort of like embedded in every corner of the globe in the fintech space. So like, and they do a really good job of sort of giving you a summary of what's going on within the fintech payments space. Um, I, you know, so, so, so that's cool. Um, I, I follow them, uh, you know, I use them to stay up to date. You know, whenever, you know, uh, 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 there's issues with banks or a, a BAS provider or a fintech's been acquired or, you know, whatever it is. Um, Jill Castilla is another one. And, and she she's a newer one to me, right? So I started following Jill maybe about a year and a half to two years ago. Um, and she's somebody who... Like she's just a pit bull in her community. Like she's just so focused on the well-being of her community and how to help and and better service like her community, which is amazing. Um, and she, of course, you guys know that she served in the military, and I think her daughter and her son. So she's got like a very big sense of community, and she runs a community bank. So she's. That's her thing. Um, and I think that's so important when we are, by we, I mean the me's of the world are going out there 
selling to banks and community banks, you know, to be aware that these banks are there to service their communities and that their communities are everything to them. Um, so she's, I mean, she's someone that I admire quite a bit. Um, and then there's, you know, the Ron Shevlin and, and Walcox and, and Jim Maru, uh, you know, so that's like the little circle that I follow and, and I, there's, there's more, I just, you know, don't have the entire list, but those guys, they each represent something, uh, whether, you know, Walt does a great job with real-time payments and he's written some pretty cool content about, you know, the leading up to the, the Fed now stuff and, and what we can expect and how it works. And he's done some good stuff too on, on, on uh, the card side of the house and, and, you know, how things are moving along, interchange fees and you name it. I mean, he's, he's like a, a encyclopedia of, of this stuff uh, digitized, of course. Um, so that's, that, that to me is, you know, that's like the core of the people that I follow these days. And, and of course, Brian, you, and you, you started talking about, you know, the, the, how you write from experience. And that's what I like about the content that you write, that it's normally things that you go through. And I think it was late last week, you posted something about how you were moving money from one bank to another uh, and you were doing it periodically uh, and, and, and you were just wondering like, okay, when is this bank going to say something to me or ask me why I'm leaving? They've been seeing that I'm periodically moving away from them and they have the data, but yet like crickets. Right. Uh, and that's fascinating. I mean, it's not like, you know, they don't have the data or anything. And, and you you just start to wonder, I mean, how many of these banks are out there that go through this uh, and, you know, they can't retain uh, clients. God knows why, you know? And so that, that sort of content is very relatable. Um, right. I mean, so. Yeah. I, I, you, and I think you and I, Nana, I probably follow many of the same, same people, you know, back in the day, there was this FinTech mafia, they called it. Uh, yep. And Jill, Jill and Ron were kind of like, and Brett King and Jim Roos and Theodore Lau. There's, you know, all the all the the standards I call them. The people that really know how to use social media, and I don't think they view it as social media. They just view it as a as a means to engage. I don't think they categorize their use of social media any other way than how they communicate. Typically, it's just it's again, it's not for everybody. I, I think social media can be very valuable just from a listening point of view, from a competitive point of view, just to take a pulse yep. of what's going on in the industry. And I think that's where Anurag has really uh, been very successful. And, and even myself, I mean, you kind of have to listen first and then insert yourself into a conversation. Uh, social media cannot be a one-way thing. It's got to be conversational. Uh, just like, you know, talking at a, to people at a cocktail hour or something like that. Speaking of cocktails, Money 2020 is coming up. Uh, I know Anurag and I, are gonna, we're going to be there. Uh, a number of the companies I uh, advise to will be there as well. Uh, Concrete, uh, Themis, uh, pretty excited about it. Alberto, any any chance yeah, you're going to so be there? I, uh, yeah, so um, I'm 90% sure that I'll be there. So I'm sure that I'll run into you guys at the famous Starbucks. And we'll talk um and but I think that is that is the most probably famous starbucks in the sorry. financial services industry i because you, like you think about how many conferences there are in that place yeah you like can't starbucks you can't miss it oh, yeah it's always there yeah you can't miss it so, and Rob, we look we look forward to your is this going to be your first trip to vegas Technically, yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I haven't been to Vegas, but I uh, have heard a lot about Vegas in terms of my 2020 specifically, not the sin side of it. But yeah, so it, it'll be interesting one, I believe. Make sure you watch The Hangover first. That's all I'm going to do. I've watched all the parts of it. I all, okay. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> well, listen, guys, it's been great to catch up. Um, again, you know, I don't want anyone in the audience to think that social media is the end all and it's like some kind of magic uh, potion that you can deploy as you try to grow your personal or business brand. It's just one of many channels. And I think the people that are really successful with it, um, again, use it to listen first and then respond, you know, secondarily 
and and they use it as a means to build trust in the market and to um as anarag mentioned really present solutions as part of a dialogue as opposed to trying to sell stuff you know i read all the time that social media is a way to to sell things i i, I don't prescribe to that i think it's just a way to relate to people and that's why i like the blend of personal to business you know that maybe it's like a 60 40 ratio for me 60 percent business 40 percent personality uh i think that's important uh, any final thoughts uh, i think it's going to yep go ahead on okay no i just want to you know again re-emphasize you know that you should really take social media seriously right try to build a personal brand for yourself doesn't matter what this will pay you in a long run if not now in the next six months one year two year three year this needs to be taken seriously uh specifically linkedin twitter not very sure about instagram that, that, that that's a fun thing which i do but definitely these two well your instagram feed tells that story because you know you're you're journaling in essence your travels yeah. Yep, you know, yep. and That's you even said you were in the, you know, at, at EXL's headquarters in Manhattan and somebody <laughs> commented about like, hey, how's it? It looks like the travel's going well. Yeah, you know? yeah, definitely. So, so the story's even, you know, getting out internally at a company with 41,000, you know, employees around the world. Alberto, how about you? Last thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I, I would just say that this webinar right now is a product of social media. Um, I, you know, this didn't happen by me calling Brian on the phone or, or Anorak sending him a random text. Like this was because of social media, Twitter more, you know, it, it was because of Twitter and, and now we're here. And, and I think, you know, there's, it's pretty cool. I mean, when, when you, when you're able to find people and build that trust and, 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 you know, collaborate and, and do things, uh, this way is it's it's pretty cool and not, not, it's not for everybody not everybody can do it uh and it's definitely you know i would say it's sort of like a, you know it's it, there's a science to it i mean you have to know who to follow you know you and, and and be careful right because there's definitely there's a lot of fluff out there but if you find you know good people that are willing to help you and like brian said it's a two-way street so make sure that you know, the world's a circle. So what goes around comes around and you want that people in your own little world to be trustworthy and, and, and meaningful in the industry that you're at so that you can build, you know, long-term relationships. Yep. Long, long-term relationships. That's what it's all about. And yep. I think we're kind of, we're kind of proof of that. Listen, I appreciate your time today, guys. I'll, uh, I'll do what I always do. I try to edit this as professionally as I can, which means I do a really crappy job. Uh, but I will put links to your uh, LinkedIn profiles, your Twitter stuff, your Instagram stuff. Uh, Alberto is always showing pictures of his lovely family out on the boat. I do the same. Uh, and Anarag will continue journaling around the world as he looks for a hopefully an apartment at some point. But anyway, appreciate your time today, guys. Thanks, guys. See you soon. Bye, guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye.